All right, guys, this video is um, just trying to explain this concept of statistical power and the relationship between uh, alpha and beta, or the probability of a type 1 error, which is alpha, and the probability of a type 2 error, which is beta. All right, so let's check out this little chart. We talked about this um, in class a little bit earlier, but what we want to do is really understand what's going on before we get into... Um, before we get into the relationship between alpha and beta. So here we've got uh, essentially when we run this this statistical test or this hypothesis test I should say what we're doing is operating under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Okay so uh, whether that's the case or not in reality is a different story. So what we want to do is look at the different scenarios um, knowing that in reality our null hypothesis is true or our null hypothesis is false. So the null hypothesis assumes that, generally assumes that, um, quote unquote, nothing has changed. Um, so what we want to do is the first scenario we're looking at, the null hypothesis is in reality it is true. So if the null hypothesis is actually true, there are two different decisions that our statistical test will tell us. The first decision is to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so our test, these are the decisions that our test is going to tell us to make um, based on the statistics that we use or the parameters that we use. So if our null hypothesis is in actuality true and we reject that null hypothesis, well, that's a problem. Our test didn't work the way that it should have. And so this is, in this case, if we reject a true null hypothesis, that's, that's not good. Okay, this is called alpha, and this alpha is the probability uh, that we reject the null hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is true. We call this a type 1 error. Okay, so this is a type 1 error. Again, that's the probability that we reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. All right, this other scenario, if... Uh, in actuality, the null hypothesis is true, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Well, that's good. That means our test worked the way that it should have. Um, it told us that there was there's not enough evidence to uh, to kind of reject that null hypothesis and say that that null hypothesis was wrong. And in actuality, that null hypothesis was not wrong. It was true. So that's what we want our test to do. All right. The next scenario that we want to look at is. Uh, if our null hypothesis is in actuality false, so we know that the null hypothesis is false, um, our test tells us to reject the null hypothesis. This is a good outcome. This is exactly what we want our test to do, is uh, if the null hypothesis is not actually the case, we want our test to say it's not actually the case. Um, so we would reject the null hypothesis in that particular case. Um, if the null hypothesis is in actuality false and our test tells us to fail to reject the null hypothesis, then that's a problem and that is the problem that we call uh, a type 2 error. All right, so this would be the probability that our tests uh, tells us to fail to reject the null hypothesis when in fact the null hypothesis um, is not the case, is not true. Okay guys, so we've talked about the relationship um, between alpha and beta a little bit, but what I want to do is give you a graphical representation of what's going on here to kind of give you a visual and hopefully we can kind of wrap our heads around the relationship between the two uh, as it relates to hypothesis testing. All right, so here are all our scenarios. We just went over those. Um, this is just a little bit of a simplified graph. Uh, I always like to kind of picture this graph when I'm when I'm trying to figure out uh, where my type one error might happen and my type two error might happen. Um, we set up this kind of dummy scenario, very basic scenario for a hypothesis test um, for a one proportion hypothesis test. So in this case, we're looking at a proportion, a, a population proportion of 0.5. So this is kind of a coin flip type of scenario. And in this particular case, we're looking at a one-tailed, uh, one-tailed test. Uh, 
So we want to look at uh, an alternative hypothesis that our true proportion is actually greater than 0.5. We're going to do this. We're going to actually set an alpha level on this. So our, um, our alpha level is 0.05, uh, level of significance. And in this particular case, our sample size is 100. So let's look at case one. And again, you remember, you think back to what we're talking about here. Case one is that our null hypothesis is actually true. So that's this scenario, these two scenarios right here. And there are two things that our test can tell us when our null hypothesis is in actuality true. Number one, the null hypothesis is actually true. So what we have is based on this alpha level, this level of significance, we've got a critical value that's going to establish a threshold to compare our p-value to. And when we establish that threshold, if our p-value is smaller than that particular threshold, then we'd be looking at a scenario where our particular p-hat falls into this region. And that is when, if our null hypothesis is actually true, uh, that's when we would get this region shaded, which happens to be alpha. All right. So if our null hypothesis is actually true, and we get a get an extreme, um, an extreme p hat, our value is going to fall into this area. And what we've done is committed uh, a type one error. So we compare that then to what uh, can also happen is when the null hypothesis is actually false. We run our test, and I've got up here what we just talked about. Here's our alpha level. This is alpha. And down here, what we're looking at is if our null hypothesis is actually false, but we've operated under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, then this shaded region right here would represent beta. And again, beta is the probability that we commit a type 2 error, that our test uh, has a type 2 error. In other words, our null hypothesis is actually false. Our model is not accurate, but we say that our initial model, our null hypothesis, is accurate. So that's beta, and that's represented by this shaded region. So before we get into uh, the little applet that I hope is going to clarify some of this stuff for you, I want you to keep in mind that um, when we run these tests, we don't know which of these cases is uh, actually present. We don't know if our H0 is actually true or H0 is actually false. Um, we're going to run our test and hope that our test kind of uh, is accurate, is going to return something that, that actually uh, works. But built into that test is the probability that if our if our null hypothesis is actually true, there's there's a certain probability based on our alpha level that uh, that our test is going to be in error, that it's going to return an error. Um, and again, we don't actually we don't know if the null hypothesis is actually true or actually false when we run these tests. But uh, based on our probabilities that we've calculated, uh, we can say with a particular amount of certainty. Um, that our outcome is going to be one way or another. Okay, so what you see here, this is what we just talked about. Over here, we've got this little applet that hopefully is going to clarify some of this stuff for you. Um, you see the two different distributions. In the blue, um, it directly relates to what we talked about up here. Um, the first case where our null hypothesis is actually true, our... Um, our distribution is going to be centered on whatever we uh, whatever we establish as our p in our null hypothesis, and it's going to have a particular standard deviation. I just kind of entered some dummy variables up here so you can see how the two distributions interact, um, but loosely we can just kind of relate one to the one to the other. So here we've got the distribution where our null hypothesis is actually true. Here we've got the distribution where our null hypothesis is actually false. And if our null hypothesis is false, that means there's some other distribution that describes the population more accurately. Uh, more specifically, it's going to be centered at um, a different proportion, and that's uh, represented by shifting that thing a little bit to the right, kind of like we did over here. We shifted this distribution to the right, uh, 
and establish our alpha and beta based on that. All right, so over here in the blue, this is our alpha level right here. So I've got it set to 0.05, which is a relatively standard uh, level of significance for our hypothesis tests. And all I want to do is show you the interaction between alpha and beta. So if the null hypothesis is true, our alpha level is 0.05. And what happens um, is we're going to run this test at an alpha equal 0.05 level. If our null hypothesis is actually false, we can see over here in the red what our beta level or the probability that we commit a type 2 error is. Um, again, in other words, the probability a type 2 error is when our null hypothesis is actually false, but we say it is true. All right? So what happens is we increase, if we increase the alpha level, and I'm just going to increase the alpha level here, you can kind of see what happens to beta. So increasing the alpha level to something relatively high, maybe we'll bring it up to right around 0 0.2. 0 0.208 in this case. If we increase the alpha level, meaning that we allow for uh, more, uh, allow more probability that we commit a type 1 error, then what happens to the beta level is it decreases. So our type, the probability that we commit a type 2 error is going to decrease in that particular scenario. Okay? If we decrease the alpha level, so that's the blue, what happens is uh, by decreasing the alpha level, we've decreased the uh, probability that we commit a type 1 error, but if that null hypothesis is in actuality false, we're going to be more likely to commit a type 2 error um, in that particular scenario. So when we run these hypothesis tests, just in general, um, we run certain risks and we can set the risk of a type 1 error right here with our alpha level, but um, directly related to that, if we set a low alpha level, level or um, we set the probability that we're going to commit a type 1 error to a lower value, we're increasing the risk that we commit a type 2 error. So the crux of all of this is really, it ties into uh, the sample size. The only way that we can actually reduce uh, the risk of committing both errors is by increasing our sample size. And let me show you what I mean by that. Right now we have uh, a sample size of 30. So if I increase that sample size to, let's say, 50, just watch what happens to the alpha level in the blue and the beta level in the red. Our alpha level has gone down, and our beta level has also decreased. Again, let me reset this to 30. We can see the probability that we commit a type 1 error is 0.015. And the probability that we commit a type 2 error is 0.29 when our sample size is 30. But if we increase that to 50, we've now decreased the probability that we commit a type 1 error or our alpha level to something relatively minuscule. We've also decreased the probability that we commit a type 2 error, aka beta, to 0.24. So let's say we run a typical test, which is 0.05, alpha level 0.05. Um, level of significance. 0.049 is as close as I'm going to get on this thing. Um, now we've got a relatively small probability that we commit a type 2 error um, and we've reduced the probability that we commit an error or our test is inaccurate. Our test um, gives us a result that is unwanted. Alright, so just again, in um, in conclusion, or in summary, I guess, uh, the lower our alpha level is, the, the more we lower our alpha level or our, our probability of committing a type 1 error, the more we run the risk of committing a type 2 error if the null hypothesis is actually false. But we can kind of correct that by increasing the sample size. Bigger samples mean that our hypothesis tests are going to be uh, correct a higher percentage of the time, no matter 
whether we whether our null hypothesis is actually true or actually false.